Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I am your host, Catherine Basu, and today I have a Meet the Instructor episode for you. When I'm not recording podcast episodes and sharing them with you here for the Fit15 Podcast, I run my own fitness company, Fit Armadillo, where we specialize in private sessions provided over live two-way video chat so you can enjoy fitness at your place and your pace. And while most of my instructors have some great videos and tips over on our website, if you go to fitarmadillo.com slash blog, you can find a lot of those. I thought it would be fun to do this series where you get to meet my instructors on the podcast show. So last week, I chatted with our yoga instructor, who is also my personal private yoga instructor, Kayla. So if you want to listen to some episodes with her and get to know her a little bit better, you can go and check out those episodes. And today I'm bringing on our Pilates instructor, Harjit. Harjit Nagra is a software engineer turned Pilates instructor at Willow Fitness, that's her company, and Fit Armadillo. Harjit helps people with old injuries to restore their bodies so they can finally exercise in the way they love. She fell in love with fitness after using Pilates to build strength and flexibility into her fragile, injury-prone body. When she's not teaching online or in Toronto, Canada, you can find Harjeet exploring new ways to move and challenge herself in dance classes, eccentrics, and circus. Welcome to the podcast, Harjeet. I'm so excited to have you joining us today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here as well. Awesome. Well, I love to, I mean, we, we did a little bio there, but could you share with us your fitness journey in a little more detail? How did you actually get from, you know, your start to where you are now in terms of your interest in fitness and how that's progressed? You could say that my fitness journey really started when I was in my mid-20s. It was a time when I was just getting a lot of injuries, um, so a lot of muscle strains. I kept getting tennis elbow, um, repetitive strain injuries to my wrists, and eventually we figured out that I had problems with hypermobility, that my um, the tissues, so the, all the connective tissues in my body, such as my muscles, my tendons, my ligaments, um, even like my blood vessels, that they were super stretchy and my doctor said I needed to do Pilates. My first experience of Pilates was in a hospital setting and I have to say, I was not impressed. (laughs) It was boring and I didn't see how those exercises were gonna help me address um, the problems I was having in my body. And that was the point where I almost quit. It wasn't until I went home and I Googled Pilates and then I saw images where For example, this woman was using a Pilates piece of equipment called the Reformer, and she was doing an exercise. I think it was called this, it was a star where she was sideways on the Reformer and one leg, one arm was in the air. And it just, it looked very acrobatic. It looked fun and it looked exciting. And I thought, that's the kind of Pilates I want to do. But of course, you have to start with the basics. And that's kind of what lit my fire and kept me going all like all over these years. So eventually, you know, I took teacher training and I did a whole lot of work on my body. And I got to the point where I was recovered enough that I started taking circus art classes. So aerial arts, trapeze, silks, and I, <laughs> I joined an aerial performance team where we trained. I was training four times a week, two hours at a time, like over 10 months. And we did two aerial shows and it was super hard and at the same time, extremely rewarding. It was incredible that I could actually do it. And this year I've, I'm making it more about like taking dance classes because you have to be, have like really quick reflexes. You have to do like a lot of standing work and coordination and, it works your body in a really different way than I found circus. And 
I'm really interested in challenging myself physically in different ways and doing the things that I kind of like would have shied away from or maybe always wanted to do, just never had the confidence or I just never had the body that supported me to do it. So that's the theme I'm, that's how I'm picking what I'm, like which fitness activities I'm pursuing. And so right now it's dance classes. And one thing in particular that I started was doing heels dancing. And you could say it's sensual dancing and it's took me way out of my comfort zone. And yet it feels incredible to do. In the future, I'm hoping to um, do soccer and then boxing and just keep building from there. That's awesome. And I can relate to that story tremendously. Growing up as a kid who hated gym class, I definitely did not think I would own my own fitness company and work in the fitness industry one day. That's for sure. Wanted to ask you, Harji, always try to encourage clients to include all three components of physical fitness into their routine, so strength, flexibility, and cardiovascular fitness. But curious if you have a favorite out of those three. Okay, so (laughs) I'm going to be one of those people who actually says, depends on all of them. (laughs) Hey, I mean, that's great. You would definitely be a great client. (laughs) So it really depends on my mood and it also depends on what my body needs. Mm. And I have to admit, I like variety, hence I like all of them. And I like to just kind of improvise at the moment. So I might have a very mixed session where I'll be, I'll first start off, I'll do like 50 jumping jacks and then I'll put on some music and then do a little dance session and then I'll go and I'll do some push-ups, and then I'll just like mix it up. I love that idea of just trying it out and seeing how your body feels in a given day because I think that's how you know for people that only like one I mean I know I really only liked or found a benefit for for running and I had to venture out and try new things I like Uh. the way you're framing this and maybe other people who have my issue can relate and maybe frame things differently for themselves where you're framing it as you know what does your body need in a given day and then taking it from there through what it needs and trying to add in a little bit of everything because really that's what makes a a well-rounded workout routine that little cue there is your halfway point reminder for those of you who are joining us and only have 15 minutes and need to turn around on your out and back walk which is a great lead-in to my next question for you harjeet Here on the Fit 15, I encourage people to get up and moving by at least walking when they tune into episodes, but I'd love to know if you only had 15 minutes to get in a workout, what might you do with that time? Okay, so again, my answer is it depends. So if I'm at home and I have access to my phone and my TV, which has a Chromecast attached to it, Mm. I sometimes just like go on YouTube and I find a like, you know, a workout that I want to do, because sometimes it's just really nice to follow along something instead of, you know, doing something that's on the fly that I choose, or right. just doing a specific routine. And so I'll do like a YouTube video on I might go to log Oh, sure, um, sure. Yeah, so I might pick something from that. Or I might go on um, something called eccentrics TV. So that's like an online subscription for short eccentric workouts that are like 10 or 15 minutes, sometimes like, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. And it packs a lot in just 10 minutes, for example. And what I love about it is that I feel like I've worked out and I've built up a sweat and I also feel stretched out at the same time. (laughs) Love that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's definitely nice as an instructor not to have to think about <laughs> what, what you're going to yes, be doing. Exactly. <laughs> it's like giving yourself a day off. <laughs> so, Harji, I'd love to know if you weren't working in the fitness industry, what would you be doing? I would definitely be a developer. So writing code, I think there's just something really satisfying about using technology to solve problems. Mm. And you could say that's my, like, my first love. (laughs) (laughs) Very cool. I wish I had those skills. (laughs) Maybe one day. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Another thing I love asking instructors is, 
about their favorite fitness tool. So even if this is something that might not fit in a client's home, I'd love to hear about some of the favorite tools you have. Maybe we can inspire people who have some of these things lying around. They can actually get some use out of them and and dive into that and possibly with you if they wanted to book a private session, but also just to decide whether or not they want to keep these things around. Okay, so I have, you could say, two favorite tools, but I'll give you my top one first. So the top one first is just really using the human body. So using my own body weight to challenge myself. And I actually quite like doing things like just even like random, just doing push-ups or even just pull-ups. But then I guess technically you need something to pull yourself up on. So that might be one piece of equipment, a pull-up bar that you can just attach to your door frame. I think there's a lot of really fun strengthening exercises that you can do on there. Sure. And the other thing is the stability ball. Mm. And I just find that it is so, it is such a versatile tool where I can literally be watching something on TV and I can just sit on the ball and I can just even do like hip circles and it'll just kind of like massage all around like my glutes and underneath my legs and it'll just relax my back. It just feels really awesome. But then I can also just like take it and then just do like push-ups or exercises for my legs. And I'll just feel really stretched out, but also at the same time, like my body's active. Definitely with you on this. Love the stability ball, love body weight exercises, push-ups and assisted pull-ups. I am not really a great regular pull-up queen, but assisted pull-up, I like that's one of my go-to <laughs> ones. I have to admit, I do get assisted pull-ups. I have my my husband. He he basically gives me an assist where he'll like hold my ribs and then help lift me up, <laughs> and then I kind of work the eccentric, the going down while I'm building up my strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Now now I feel a little better. <laughs> but I agree. I mean, that's that that's my go go to equipment when I'm when I'm using it. So very cool. Have that in common. So I guess one thing you know, in case someone's listening and and they're interested in being a client. I often like to, to match people and, and have like a really good fit. And I know that for, for me, if I have a client that mentions anything about running, I'll go, you know, to extreme lengths to work with the client. So <laughs> do you have something that, you know, if you find out this, this certain thing about a client, whatever that might be, that you feel like you have to work with them? Okay. So one thing that immediately pops into mind is if they're a person and then they have a lot of tension in their shoulders and their arms, their upper body, mm. or if they have injuries to their shoulders or to their arms, their hand, like anything down that chain. And it's just, the reason for that is that it just hits really close to home. Because of my chronic condition, I just, I had a lot of problems with my arms and I got to the point where I couldn't even do like say the fine motor control with my hands and I had trouble with just like doing handwriting and you know just even using cutlery I couldn't do grocery shopping and it just when you can't use your arms right it impacts your life in every way Mm. so I just really feel for those people and it's just something that if I see them having, you know, any kind of issue like that, it's like when I see them, it's the first thing that I always check to see what their shoulders are doing and, you know, how it relates to the torso, the core strength. And yeah. Love that. No, I mean, that's great that you can, you'll be, you'll be able to relate to them in that way and, and be able to, to help them out from your firsthand experience as well. All right. To wrap up today's episode and keep things fun. I'd love to hear from you, Harji, a fun fact about you, something the listeners might not know about even if they're clients of yours and have been following Fit Armadillo for a while. All right, a fun fact about me. Last year, um, when I was in the aerial performance team, we braided together four different silks, made a silk tree, and then we climbed it as if we were tree nymphs. It was pretty fun. (laughs) Very cool. Well, thank you so much for, for kind of giving us an insight and allowing us to, to meet you a little bit more through the podcast format. Anything you want to share just for people to be able to connect with you? Obviously, they can find you over on the Fit Armadillo website, but just for other things that you're working on that you might want to let them know about or they could check those, those things out as well. 
Um, okay, so one new thing that I'm working on is I'm starting up my own website called Willow Fitness, and it's specifically a website for people who want to do exercise in a certain way, but they can't because they have like weaknesses or maybe they have like injuries in their body and they want to um, heal those injuries so that they can go and do this form of exercise. Mm. No, that's, that's awesome. Is that going to be organized by like type of injury or just maybe or, or joint or I'm just curious as how that'll work out for people who might be interested. So definitely there's going to be a lot about the shoulders, mm. but I was thinking that I'd stay open-minded and see what kind of people, like what kind of injuries people had. Like, and then just kind of, because I like to improvise, yeah. <laughs> just kind of <laughs> work out from there. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then links. So website and anywhere else to find you because like I said, Fit Armadillo will be a good place, but then do you have your own like Instagram and all those things that they should be checking out just to kind of stay tuned on your other projects you might have going on? Sure. So you can always contact me at, by email. So that's Harjit, H-A-R-J-I-T at willowfitness.com. Mm -hmm. You can also find me on Instagram. So it's Harjit again period willow fitness awesome well thanks harji and excited to have you share your insights and background and and have people learn more about you and uh and and more about what you're working on so thanks for joining us today oh thank you for having me thanks for listening to the fit 15 for show notes and more visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast see you next time Hi friends, it's Catherine. I hope that Harjeet and I will both get to chat with you next time because you will subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done so already. Those of you who have, don't forget to go and leave a review. Next time, in order of the episodes being released, Harjeet will be back and we'll be talking about Pilates. So if you've been wondering what Pilates is and whether it would be a good complement to your workout routine, hint, hint, it probably is. I can't really think of a reason why it would not be. But if you're curious about it, you can listen to tomorrow's episode with Harjeet. One last thing I wanted to remind you of, those of you who are tuning in when this episode goes live, so that's Monday, April 2nd, 2018, I still have, I think, depending on how things go the next few days, some early bird spots left for the Drop Two Sizes Challenge. This is a 10-week small group fitness program with tons of support that enables me to actually guarantee that you'll drop two sizes if that is a goal that you have. And if not, you'll be able to learn how to create and stick to a home workout routine with minimal equipment that you can do from anywhere and get just general health benefits. So toning up, feeling really great and fabulous from the inside out in as little as four to five hours a day. So if you're interested in something to change up your workout before we head into the summer, I would love to have you check that out. Go to fitarmadillo.com slash D2S. That's fitarmadillo.com slash D as in drop, two as in the number two, and S as in sizes. Hope to have the honor of working with you this spring and look forward to chatting with Harjeet and sharing more about Pilates with you tomorrow. See you then or chat with you then. Bye.